let's get started. First up, to be on the fence. And what does it mean to be on the fence? Is it A, to have no idea, B, to be undecided, or C, to be committed? Now, let's look at an example sentence to help you understand the meaning and to get the correct answer. Because when you read phrases in context, it really does give you the meaning. So I'm on the fence about which job offer to accept. So I'm on the fence. Would you say that I'm undecided? If you chose B, well done. On the fence means to be undecided. Where do you stand on an issue? I'm on the fence. I'm undecided. Why are you on the fence? Because I don't have enough information to make an informed decision. And hey, fun fact, this phrase comes from the idea of literally sitting on the fence, neither on one side or the other, on the fence. Let's move on to phrase number two, which is speak your mind. And if you speak your mind, what are you doing? A, talking too much. B, keeping your thoughts to yourself. Or C, saying exactly what you think. Don't be afraid to speak your mind during the meeting. If I say this to you, don't be afraid to speak your mind during the meeting. Am I saying A, B, or C? Am I saying to you, say exactly what you think? Did you choose C? Well done. And another fun fact. In medieval times, the word mind referred to the soul or the inner self. So speaking your mind was very personal. It was saying exactly what you were thinking, what you were feeling, what your soul felt. Are you ready for cross your mind? What happens when something crosses your mind? Is it A, you remember something from the past? You remember, you reminisce? Nope. B, you think of something briefly. Or C, you speak your mind. Once again, let's look at an example sentence to help you choose the correct answer. It crossed my mind that we should check the weather before hiking. Was this something from the past? No. So we can rule out A. A is not correct. You think of something briefly. Yeah, it just crossed my mind. C, you speak your mind. I don't think it's C. If you chose B, well done. If something crosses your mind, it means you think of it briefly. And a fun fact, this phrase originates from the 17th century, referring to thoughts passing across the brain, just crossing your mind, crossing across your brain. Now, if you're loving this, if you're learning something valuable from this, if it's giving you the confidence to use these phrases, please like and subscribe. And did you know that we present advanced vocabulary twice a month on this channel? So do hit that bell. Time for weigh your options. When you weigh your options, what are you doing? Are you measuring your feelings? Are you considering different choices? Or C, are you ignoring all choices? Let's look at an example sentence because reading this in context will really help you to choose. And I'm not going to say guess because it's more than guessing. It will help you select. It will help you choose the correct option. Before making a decision, you should weigh your options carefully. Is this about measuring your feelings or is it about considering different choices? I'm going to go with B. How about you? Considering different choices. Weigh your options. Consider different choices. Well done. And this phrase compares decision-making 
to weighing objects on a scale, right? You weigh the pros and cons. You weigh your options. Nice one. Do you like this phrase? If you do, please hit the like button, comment and join the conversation. Which of these phrases have you enjoyed the most so far? We've still got a couple more loading for you, so don't go away. Have mixed feelings. And what does it mean to have mixed feelings? To feel both positive and negative emotions. B, to feel nothing at all. Or C, to feel confused. Now, this one's a little tricky because I think many of you are going to be on the fence between A and C. But look at the phrase really carefully and then we'll look at the example sentence. Mixed feelings. Feelings. What's another word for feelings? But hold on to that thought. Let's dive into the example sentence. I have mixed feelings about moving to a new city. Mixed feelings. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, I'm confused. Okay, that would not be incorrect. But let's just look at the phrase mixed feelings. Mixed, positive and negative. Feelings, emotions. Based on this, I'm going to go with A. But hey, when you have mixed feelings, when you are feeling both positive and negative emotions, you're probably also a little confused. So yeah, I hear you. Both are very close, but the correct answer here would be, yes, you guessed it, A. And the concept of having mixed feelings is used in psychology to describe ambivalence. Okay, mixed feelings, not quite sure. Positive and negative emotions. This one's a tricky one. I'll give you that. Next up, get something off your chest. Imagine you're lying on the ground with something heavy on your chest. Maybe you're at the gym and you have weights on your chest. And if you get something off your chest, how do you feel? So when you get something off your chest, what do you do? Do you talk? about your problems? Do you forget about your worries? Or do you just take a deep breath? you getting it off your chest. You are removing it. Let's look at an example sentence to help you choose the correct option. I feel so much better after getting that off my chest. Do I feel better after talking about my problems? A. Or B, forgetting about my worries. Or C, taking a deep breath. I'm going to go with A. How about you? Talking about your problems, getting something off your chest. The phrase dates back to the 1700s, symbolizing the physical relief of removing a weight from your body. So when something is on your mind, and it's bothering you, talking about it is a very positive action. You are getting it off your chest. By talking about it, you're getting something off your chest. This one's interesting. Why do we have some chickens sitting on eggs? Well, sit on the idea. What does it mean to sit on the idea? To forget about the idea? to wait and think before acting, or C, to reject the idea. Once again, example sentences, phrases in context really do help you to understand them. This is one of the reasons ESL learners struggle with advanced phrases or idiomatic language. They just try to learn the phrase with the meaning, but context is super Super important. So let's look at the example sentence. I'll sit on the idea for a few days before deciding. 
Now, by looking at the example sentence, what do you think the correct alternative is? I'll sit on the idea for a few days before designing, deciding. I'll forget about the idea. I don't think so. I'll wait and think before acting. That sounds a bit better. See, reject the idea before deciding. No, that doesn't make sense at all. So the correct answer is B. Sit on the idea means to wait and think before acting. And hey, the idea of sitting on something implies patience and waiting, like a hen sitting on eggs. This one's interesting. Second guess yourself. Second guess. What does it mean to second guess yourself? Does it mean to change your mind? To doubt your decision? Or see, to make a quick decision? Let's dive into our example sentence. I always second guess myself when it comes to important choices. So does it mean that I always change my mind? Or does it mean I always doubt my decision? Or see, I always make a quick decision when it comes to important choices. This example sentence doesn't really give you the meaning. So I'm going to dive right in there and give it to you. When you second guess yourself, you doubt your decision. You second guess. You make the decision and then you think about it and you wonder whether you made the right decision. You second guess yourself. This term originally referred to a second guess though. That's someone who doubts another person's decision. But if you second guess yourself, it means you doubt your decisions. See eye to eye. And if two people see eye to eye, what does that mean? A, they disagree. B, they agree. C, they ignore each other. We don't always see eye to eye. This phrase is being used in a negative context. But we respect each other's opinions. So we don't always disagree, but we always respect each other's opinions. That doesn't sound right. I'm going to just ignore A or rule A out. How about B? We don't always agree, but we respect each other's opinions. That sounds better. Ignore each other? Mm -mm, I don't think so. So if I see eye to eye with you, it means that, or if we see eye to eye, it means we agree with each other. And if we don't see eye to eye, we don't agree, we disagree. And hey, this phrase goes way back. It has biblical origins appearing in the book of Isaiah. Now, to have a gut feeling. What is a gut feeling? Gut. What is your gut? It's your stomach. So what is a gut feeling? Is it a logical deduction? Is it a strong emotional reaction? Or is it an instinctive intuition? Let's look at an example sentence. I have a gut feeling that this is the right decision. Is it logical? Is it a strong emotional reaction? Or is it about your intuition? I have a gut feeling about him. He's not a good guy. I have a gut feeling that something's wrong. Is it intuition? If you said, see, you are absolutely correct. To have a gut feeling is to have an instinctive, intuitive reaction or feeling. And modern research shows that the gut is connected to the brain via the vagus nerve. This is a trending topic, the vagus nerve. And this supports the idea that intuition may actually have a physical basis. So when you have this instinctive feeling, this intuition, it's linked to the gut through the vagus nerve. And that's why you have a gut feeling. It's this 
intuition, which is a feeling without real logic, without science. It's just an intuition. You feel like something's wrong. You don't trust something. It's just a feeling that you have. And sometimes you just have this gut feeling and you can't quite explain it because it's instinctive and it's your intuition. Now, just a quick recap. We do have other episodes in the series. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. But what exactly have you learned and mastered in this session? 10 advanced phrases that you honestly cannot learn from a textbook. These phrases do require explanation. And as I said before, native speakers like myself toss it around with ease. We grew up around these phrases. They're just part of our language and our vocabulary. So once or twice a month, I want to bring this series to you for the ESL learner who simply does not have the time to watch lengthy videos I have created these bite size. They might be bite size, but they high on quality sessions where you can learn advanced phrases from a native English speaker. I am CELTA certified. Also, you learn how to use them in context. And hey, if you want to take the journey a step further, you can join one of the group classes dedicated to the usage of these phrases, discussions with fellow ESL learners. So if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like and subscribe button. But before you go in the comments, let me know which phrase you are going to use this week. And on that note, thank you for joining me today. I'm Nas, CELTA certified native English speaker, and it is ciao for now.